Hey, my believer besties. Today we are Bible studying from the car. Um, I figured we would just have <laughs> a real life moment. Some days I don't get the opportunity to Bible study from home. Being that I work outside of the household <laughs> five days a week um, and I have to come into the office physically two days a week, um, it does mean that sometimes I don't have the opportunity to work from my office or my desk. And so I figured I could bring you guys with me. I'm on my lunch break, Shuna Might Woman. Um, so I figured I would take you guys with me as I Bible study um, 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 1 to 6, which will wrap up this woman. Today's scripture is 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 1 to 6. And if you haven't been around here for a while, I have read from the ESV translation. Now Elijah has said to the woman whose son he had restored life, Arise and depart with your household and sojourn wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, and it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose, and she did according to the word of the man of God. She went with her household and sojourned in the land of Philistine seven years. And at the end of the seven years, when the woman returned from the land of Philistine, she went to appeal to the king for her house and her land. Now the king was talking to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me all the great things that Elisha has done. And while he was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, behold, the woman whose son he had restored life to, I'm sorry, the woman whose son he had restored to life, appealed to the king for her house in her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, here's the woman, and here's her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed an official for her, saying, Restore all that was hers, together with all the produce of the field, from the day that she left the land until now. All right, my standout verse for today is... And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed an official for her saying, restore all that was hers together with all the produce of the field from the day that she left the land until now. Second Kings chapter eight, verse six. My observations from today. Elijah warned the Shunammite woman that a famine was coming to the land and he told her to go in sojourn to take her family and go somewhere else. So the woman did as she as he said and she took her family to Philistine. She returned to the land and she came back and when she came back she came to the king to reclaim her land. As she stood there there also was Gehazi and he was telling the king about Elijah's deeds. And Gehazi seeing the Shunammite woman, he tells the king, hey, this is the woman that I spoke of that Elijah raised her son from the dead. And so the king, he not only restores her land, but he also requires that she be paid back all the money that was made off of her field since she departed. My application from today is when we fail to see God as our source, we think that it's up to us to get to go out and get what we think we deserve. I know that so often I'm always like culture, society, conform, don't conform to the ways of the world. Um, And those are words that you have heard me say so often. And I know that today's scripture may not have made you think about God being your source, but I am. I am thinking back to our last reading of the Shunammite woman and knowing that she has to be a woman of faith because one, she trusted that Elijah and she seen with her eyes, with her spiritual eyes, that Elijah was a man of God. And so it takes faith to be able to see that in other people. So I'm believing that in this same setting when she, because I'm trying to make it make, it make sense for y'all of what my thought process was. I'm believing that in the same setting as she goes to the king to appeal for her land, although she is following what the process is in the natural, I'm just believing that her being a woman of faith, she's knowing that her land has already been restored to her because 
God, you know, he is the God who reigns and who is sovereign and he is her source. And so if he could raise her son from the dead, why would she expect for him to do anything less than to make sure that her and her household has a place to stay? So I'm just daring to believe that even as she does this natural work, that she is already trusting God that he's going to provide. And what does he do? He does just that. He does more than just restore her land. He also provides money. Like they are going to pay her the money that has been made off of her fields. They didn't have to do that. And only God could have made the timing be so such a way that she would show up right when she her story is being told to the king to where she would end up getting back more than she was probably even expecting and that's that's god and that just is another reminder of like He is the source, even in the trials and the tribulations, trusting that, hey, hey, hey." I'm sure when she when they were, you know, sojourning in in Philistine, she was believing that she was going to be able to return home. Why else would she have returned in the seven years when a lot that Elijah told her to return? She was believing the word of God. So I'm just I'm seeing her faith throughout this story, even though it's not explicitly said, I'm seeing that like. No, you got to have faith. You got to have faith to first of all, leave your house because a man of God told you to leave your house and then also return because this is when he told you to return. So in that same respects, you're believing that, hey, I followed your instructions, God. So I'm also believing that you're going to restore what was mine. And if you ain't going to restore that, then you're going to give me something better. So I'm just seeing her faith in her actions here. It may not be said, you may not have taken away that, but that is what I took away. And so just as she saw God restore her son's life, of course, she was trusting God that he was going to restore her property. And I guess my question to all of us, because y'all know I always got questions (laughs) to my application is, do you believe that the God you serve is a God of restoration? Like that he is the God who restores And I know many of us may not be waiting on a financial or physical restoration. Many of us may be waiting on a mental health restoration, on an emotional restoration. We may be waiting on relationships, on marriages to be restored. But do you believe that he is the God who can restore it? And do you look at the many ways in your life right now in which he has already began that process? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that even in our unasked petitions, even in our not said out loud petitions, Father God, you are hearing our cries. You are hearing our prayers. You are hearing our pleas for not just restoration, Father God, but healing for peace, for more of you, Father God, for abundance, for the abundance to believe that you are a God who reigns for the abundance to believe that you are growing our discernment, Father God, so that we can make better decisions that are more in line with your word, Father God, for the abundance to believe, Father God, that our spiritual eyes and ears are growing and that we can trust the many things that the Holy Spirit is downloading into us, Father God. If I rest on your truth, Father God, I know that you are are my source you're not just the source of my provision but you are the source of my love you are the source of my peace you are the source of my joy and I thank you I thank you for the sacrifices of your only son Jesus Christ and I know that in all circumstances I can be content simply because you are the source simply because the blood of Jesus is still powerful today And I will continue and we all, I pray that each and every one of us under the sound of my voice would continue to trust that even what we thought we lost, Father God, that you can restore it. We are believing that every good and perfect gift is from you, period. Simply because that is who you are. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Sometimes 10 minutes is all you have (laughs) to Bible study, and that's okay. It's sufficient. It's probably been more like 10 to 
it's honestly been more like 10 to 15 minutes because I had to read today's word off camera since the only Bible I have is on my phone. But nonetheless, it, it would be easy for old me to get frustrated, to feel condemned in this moment by not being able to devote more time in my Bible study um, today. But today, for me, it's just like his grace is sufficient. He made this time, this although it might be short, available to me because he knew that it was more than enough for him to speak to me, for him to give me revelations, for him to continue to grow and mature me. And so I just have to trust that God, he honors, right? He honors our time um, that we dedicate to him. He honors how we, um, re how we revere him, how we um, worship him because I know that my worship time with him is not going to stop with me writing on this notebook. Um, it will continue throughout this entire work day. You know, my worship time with him started first thing this morning when I got out of the bed and I turned on my worship music, my work, my worship time with him. It continued as I drove to work for two hours and I listened to beautiful stories um, about women who had been martyred and then I listened to worship music and sang his praises. So our worship time and our devotion time, um, I guess is what I'm saying, it does not have to be limited to just to study studying of the word. Although studying the word is important, it is vital to us um, as believers. Don't limit yourself or condemn yourself by thinking that you have to spend endless hours reading your Bible in order to connect with God. If you only have 15 minutes or 30 minutes a day, just make sure you come into those minutes, that time, you know, ready to truly focus on him, to dedicate yourself to him and to give him all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And I'll probably go back to my desk and spend some time listening to the Bible, um, as I sit at my desk, or I might continue to listen to um, this book that I'm listening about, about Christ Christian women who um, have been martyrs. Or, um, they're like, it's like about women who have been a part of the underground church. So nonetheless, I guess my point is just that our worship and our devotion time, it does not start in the, I'm sorry, it does not start and finish with Bible study. So I would just encourage you to find other ways outside of just Bible studying to really devote yourself um, to him, to really spend time with him. And sometimes that might just mean mental reminders of the word, you know, meditating on the word, even as you are at work, even as you take care of your children, even as you take care of your household, um, continuing to pray, right? Like we, we can pray wherever we are. We don't have to be on our knees. Um, throughout the day. So I just want to encourage you in whatever season of life that you are in to know that God already knew that season was coming um, and he's already equipped you, right, for how you can spend time with him in your current season. And maybe it doesn't look like your past season and it likely won't look like what your future season will, but you can still find a way to honor him um, no matter what season of life that you're in.